Okay, let's unpack this. You know that feeling, right? Staring in the mirror, another breakout pops up, and you're just swimming in skincare advice online. Oh yeah, it's totally Both, overwhelming. It makes you want to give up sometimes. Completely, and finding something that works and doesn't cost the earth feels impossible sometimes. Exactly. So uh, we kind of did the legwork. Today, we're diving deep into this eight-week acne plan. It's from the budget dermatologist on YouTube. Dr. Marin, yeah, a board-certified derm. Right, her video, Fix Acne in Eight Weeks, Step-by-Step -step Skincare Routine by the Budget Derm. That's our guide. We're basically trying to pull out the essentials, give you a clear step-by-step -step thing based on, well, what actually causes acne. And what's great about her approach, I think, is that it really targets the why. Yeah. You know, not just putting a plaster on it, but understanding the root causes. Okay, so let's get right into that. What are these root causes Dr. Marin talks about? Well, she breaks it down into four main things. Yep. First up, there's bacteria on the skin, mm -hmm. specifically uh, cutie bacterium acne. Acnes, okay. And that causes inflammation. Yeah, it can contribute to inflammation in the pores. That's the first. Starting with the morning, what's step one? Okay, morning routine kicks off with a benzoyl peroxide cleanser. She specifically mentions the Cerave Acne Foaming Cream Cleanser. That one's got 4% benzoyl peroxide. Benzoyl peroxide, yeah, that's a classic acne fighter. How does it hit that first target, the bacteria? It's pretty effective, actually. It releases oxygen onto the skin and um, C. acne's bacteria. They hate oxygen, so it basically kills them off. Reduces their numbers, okay. Uh. The video notes, you can get it up to 10%. Why start with 4%? Is it about irritation? Precisely. Starting lower, like with 4%, helps your skin get used to it. Going straight for 10% can sometimes cause a lot of dryness, maybe redness. It's about finding that sweet spot, you know. Effective, but tolerable. And the Cerave one specifically, any reason she likes that formulation? Yeah, she points out it's often less irritating. It's got ceramides in there, which are great for your skin barrier. And uh, niacinamide too. Niacinamide keeps popping up. What's its job here? It's a real multitasker. It can help calm down inflammation, that's target three. And it might help regulate oil production too, which is target four. So it's a nice bonus in the cleanser. Okay. Now there was that whole thing recently about benzene in benzoyl peroxide products. What's the advice there? Right. Dr. Marin's advice is pretty practical. Use fresh bottles. Don't leave them sitting in a hot bathroom cabinet. You know, store them cool. Uh -huh. And replace them regularly. Basically minimize the chance of it degrading. Good tips. And if benzoyl peroxide is just too much for someone's skin, is there an alternative? Yeah, she suggests maybe trying an AHA cleanser instead, like uh, glycolic acid or lactic acid. But she does say benzoyl peroxide is generally better for specifically killing that C. actes bacteria. Good to know. Oh, and quick heads up for everyone listening, benzoyl peroxide bleaches stuff, towels, pillowcases, be careful. Yes, definitely watch out for that. <laughs> oh, okay, morning step two, what's next after cleansing? Next up is a leave-on salicylic acid. The product mentioned is Pinoxyl 2% salicylic acid. The key here is that 2% strength, it's the highest you can get over the counter. Salicylic acid, another big name. How does that tackle target number two, the sticky cells and clogged pores? Exactly. Yeah. Salicylic acid is a BHA, a beta hydroxy acid. And the cool thing about it is it's oil soluble. Meaning it can get into the oily pore? Precisely. It gets down into the pore, into the oil gland, and helps break up all that gunk, the oil, the dead cells. Really good for existing whiteheads and blackheads. Gets things moving. So it cleans out the pipes, basically. And she prefers this over AHAs for this job. Yeah, because AHAs are water-soluble. They work more on the surface. Salicylic acid gets deeper because it dissolves in oil. That's why it's better for decongesting those pores. Okay, that difference is really helpful. So cleanse salicylic acid. What's the final morning step? Final step is moisturizer and SPF, super important. Dr. Marin really stresses moisturizing, even if you have oily skin. Right, because the treatments can be drying. Exactly, yeah. you need to protect your skin barrier. Plus, it stops your skin from freaking out and maybe producing more oil to compensate if it gets too dry. Makes sense. What product does she suggest? She recommends the Cerave Ultralight Moisturizing Lotion with SPF 30. She likes it because it's, well, ultralight, doesn't feel heavy, gives a matte finish. Good for oily skin types who might normally hate moisturizers. Combining moisturizer and SPF, smart for the morning rush. Okay, let's switch gears. Nighttime routine. What do we do first when the day's over? Nighttime starts simple. Gentle cleanser. <laughs> she mentions Vanacream. Vana 
Gentle Facial Cleanser. It's affordable, super plain, no irritants, just gets the job done, takes off the day's grime without stripping your skin. Gentle is key, especially with the actives coming up. So step two at night, this feels like a big one. It is. Step two is Adipalene 0.1% gel. You can find it under different brand names like it different La Roche Posay has one, but the key is Adipalene 0.1%. Adipalene, that's a retinoid, isn't it? How does that work against acne? Right, it's a type of retinoid. It's its main job is preventing new acne. It helps normalize how your skin cells turn over. So it stops those sticky cells from building up and clogging pores in the first place. Ah, so it's playing the long game, preventing future clogs. Exactly. And she really emphasizes use a pea-sized amount, thin layer, all over the face. Mm -hmm. Not just a spot treatment for existing pimples. It's about prevention mm -hmm. across the board. Okay, all over. Got it. She calls this one crucial for long-term management. Definitely. Benzoyl peroxide and salicylic acid are great for dealing with what's there, but adipalene helps stop the cycle from starting again. All right. Nighttime step three, another moisturizer. Yep. Got to lock it in. Mm. She suggests the La Roche-Posay Double Repair Moisturizer, but the gel cream version, mm -hmm. again, lighter texture for oily or acne-prone skin. And does that one have those extra goodies too? It does. Also has ceramides for barrier support and niacinamide for, you know, inflammation and oil control. Consistent theme there. It seems like keeping that skin barrier happy is non-negotiable in this routine. Right. Okay, now. The secret weapon. The sulfur mask. Where does that fit in? Okay, the sulfur mask. Yeah. She mentions the Active-Free Acne Clearing Sulfur Mask. It's 3.5% sulfur. This gets worked into the nighttime routine, but not every night, just one or two times a week. And on nights, you use the mask. You skip the adipalene. Can't use both on the same night. Likely too irritating. Okay, so what's the routine on a sulfur mask night? Cleanse gently, as usual. Yeah. Then apply the sulfur mask, leave it on for however long the instructions say, usually 10 minutes or so, rinse it off thoroughly, then follow up with your nighttime moisturizer. And why sulfur? What makes it a secret weapon? You said it hits all four causes. Yeah, it's kind of an all-rounder. It's antibacterial, so it helps with C acnes. It's keratolytic, meaning it helps break down and shed dead skin cells, tackling the sticky cell problem. Okay. Plus, it's anti-inflammatory. Right. And it can help soak up some excess oil, so it really does tick a lot of boxes. Wow, okay. Multitasker indeed. Now, like benzoyl peroxide, you can get stronger sulfur, right? Why start lower at 3.5%? Same reason, really. Higher percentages, up to 10%, exist, but they can be pretty drying. Starting lower lets your skin adjust, see how you handle it, before you potentially ramp up later if you need to. This all sounds pretty comprehensive, but Dr. Marin also talks a lot about consistency, and crucially, starting slowly. Can you break down that phased approach she recommends? Yeah, this is really important. Don't just jump in and slap all these actives on day one, especially if you have sensitive skin or no current routine. Right, so phase one. Phase one is just basics. Focus on getting your skin barrier happy. So gentle cleanser, simple moisturizer, sunscreen every single day. Get that routine down first. Build the foundation. Okay, phase two. Once your skin feels good with the basics, you slowly introduce the adipalene at night. Maybe just twice a week to start, see how your skin reacts. If it's fine, maybe go up to three times, gradually increasing frequency as long as you're not getting super irritated or dry. Slow and steady with the retinoid. Got it. Phase three. Phase three is when you bring in the other fighters. Start using the benzoyl peroxide cleanser in the morning and then add the leave-on salicylic acid after cleansing in the morning too. Okay, introducing the morning actives now and the final phase. Phase four is adding the sulfur mask one or two nights a week. Remember, on the nights you don't use Adaplane, the whole point is listen to your skin. It's not a race. Avoid irritation. That makes so much sense. Build tolerance, see what works. Now, what if someone does all this, they follow the phases, they're consistent for the full eight weeks, but it's still not working as well as they hoped. What then? Good question. The first troubleshooting step, if your skin is handling the current routine well, is to potentially increase the strength. Like going up to that 10% benzoyl peroxide. Exactly. Or maybe trying a stronger sulfur mask, like 5% or even 10%, if your skin tolerated the 3.5% without issues. See if that extra kick helps. Okay, try bumping up the concentration, but what if even that doesn't cut it? Well, Dr. Marin makes a key point here. If you've tried the higher strength over-the-counter options consistently, and you're still struggling significantly, it might mean your acne is more moderate to severe. And OTC just isn't enough. It might not be. At that point, the best move is really to see a board-certified dermatologist. They have access to prescription treatments that are stronger or work differently. Right. Knowing when to seek professional help is key. 
Okay, before we wrap up, the video mentions some optional level up things, extra bits you could add. Yeah, some add-ons if you want to go further. One is hypochlorous acid spray. It's antibacterial, anti-inflammatory. You can spritz it on morning, night, even after the gym, as she mentions. Hmm, interesting. Like an extra sanitize of a step. What else? For body acne back, chest, she's just a couple of things. The salicylic acid spray, maybe up to 2%. Or using a benzoyl peroxide wash, maybe up to 10% in the shower for those areas. Oh, good tip for back knee. Anything else? Uh, yeah, a few more. At home, blue light therapy, like an LED mask. That can target bacteria and inflammation. Pimple patches for individual spots helps protect them. Stops picking. Yes, those patches are great. And finally, she mentions using disposable face towels, like the Clean Skin Club ones, to avoid transferring bacteria from regular towels. So lots of little tweaks you could make, depending on your specific issues and budget, I guess. Exactly. They're extras, not essential to the core routine. Okay, this has been super detailed as we finish this deep dive into the budget dermatologist's plan, let's quickly recap the absolute must-knows. Sure. So remember those four causes. Bacteria, sticky cells, inflammation, excess oil. The routine tackles these with four key OTC ingredients. Mm -hmm. Benzoyl peroxide, bacteria, salicylic acid, clogged pores, mm -hmm. adipoline, prevention cell turnover, mm -hmm. and sulfur, the all-rounder. And consistency is key. Absolutely. Plus that phased introduction, don't rush it. What's also neat is how it's structured, right? Like benzoyl peroxide in the morning for the bacteria, adipoline working overnight on cell turnover. It's uh, strategic layering. Yeah, it feels very thought out. Okay, so for our final thought for you listening, thinking about those four root causes and this very targeted affordable approach what's maybe one thing you could adjust in your own routine or maybe what surprised you most about this plan and how could you use that info yeah just shifting focus maybe from just zapping pimples to actually addressing why they're happening it's a more sustainable approach, I think. Definitely food for thought. If this was helpful, do check out The Budget Dermatologist on YouTube for more, or look into the specific products we talked about. And let us know what other skincare deep dives you'd like to hear. Thanks for tuning in today.